Alright guys, so we're going to take a look real quick. Um, I just wanted to talk about kind of the concept for those of you who may be catching this video without reading the article first. Um, what I've decided to do is every once in a while, um, you know, as I'm, I like to do a couple of casual articles here and there. So what I'm going to do is dig through basically my endless list of decks that I do have for Popper um, and pull out something old-fashioned, something crazy, something casual, uh, just something interesting, something different. Uh, just so we can have a little bit of fun and, and see something that we don't see in the everyday competitive scene. So this week we are taking a look at a deck that is labeled simply as COGS um, in my file. And I kind of understand the concept. I don't remember where this came from. It's not something that I had created. Um, but the concept basically is the fact that you're running this COG pass package here with all these little one-cost artifacts. And you can kind of tinker them out here with your full copies of Trinket Mage. You also get a lot of great interaction here with the Leon and Squire, and I think that's something that should not be um, underestimated by any means. But the basic idea of the deck is uh, a three color control deck that uses artifacts um, and a lot of card draw and momentary blink, a lot of great stuff here. So let's kind of talk about the card choices. Um, we're gonna start with the creature base because it really is what brings this deck together. So as I said, we are going to be running a full set of Trinket Mage, and that is the 2-2 two, two, for 2 and a blue that allows you to search your library for an artifact and put it into your hand that has a converted mana cost of 1 or less. So this is really a great card. It's been a great opportunity for things like Demir Trinket, and there's even been an Azurus Trinket deck um, that may see a play in uh, one of these articles later on. Um, and it has really made those what they can be. There's a lot of great actually one cost artifacts in Popper. It's something that as you move on, you know, there's a lot of great and powerful stuff into other vintage formats, things like Legacy and whatnot. Um, but there's also a lot of great fun stuff you can grab with these. Uh, most importantly, it can actually work as land fetched. Um, you can use it to get any of the artifact lands and put one of those into your hand. It helps really balance you out. And if you're running a deck that is not running green, this is a great opportunity for you to be able to kind of fix your color base. Um, in addition to that, it's going to run a full set of Leon and Squire. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this, it is a 1 and white for a 2-2, and when it enters the battlefield, you return target artifact with converted mana cost of 1 or less from your graveyard to your hand. So these two cards work very well together in kind of this great interaction, um, giving you opportunities to find artifacts from your deck and reuse them from your graveyard. Uh, obviously, this will make the deck very vulnerable to grave hate, but we don't see a lot of that. There are bogs going around these days, but that's something that is not incredibly common, um, and it gives you still a lot of great interactions, even if that does occur. What this allows you to do is really make some abuse out of these spell bombs here. They're going to be kind of the biggest part that you're going to be looking to use the Squire and even Gargoyle here um, and recur, and so you can use these effects for the colors. Um, the last creature I'm going to talk about real quick here is the Sanctum Gargoyle, and it is a 3 and a, a white to get a 2-3 flyer. It's an artifact creature that when he enters the battlefield, you may return an artifact from your graveyard to your hand. So it's basically going to act as copies 5 and 6 of the Leon and Squire. Um, definitely not as powerful, but you know, it's kind of the trade-off. You're already running the full set of the Squire, so you got to kind of balance things out. Um, it is still a decent card. You get the sizes 2, 3, you know, that's nothing to complain about. Um, and it does have the evasion to it as well. Um, hopefully, you know, with the help of the Trinket Mage, you can fix your mana base and getting that four mana to put it into play is going to be no problem. It'll work really great, you know, in the mid to late game. Um, so what you basically do is you're using it to find these spell bombs, as I said. Now this deck is running three of the spell bombs, and these are some of the original ones out of the Mirrodin sets. Um, the first one is Pyrite Spell Bomb. The second is Aether Spell Bomb, and the third is Sunbeam Spell Bomb. Now the newer ones that we've gotten access to are much different. They are given an ability that is um, kind of fits in the color wheel um, and they also have a secondary part to it that when you use that spell bomb um, you can pay the specific color to draw a card in addition to the effect. Now these original ones out of Mirrodin worked differently. Each one got two abilities. One was activated with the specific color and one was activated with a single colorless mana. As you see here with the Sunbeam Spellbomb for example, if you pay one white you sacrifice it to gain five life. And if you pay the one colorless, you draw a card. Now, all of the spell bombs, no matter what color they were associated with, did have the pay one life draw, or I'm sorry, pay one mana draw a card um, for the colorless ability. Um, and each one differed based on what the colored one was. So the spell bomb here, the sunbeam, gives you the five life. Aether spell bomb, when it's sacrificed, allows you to return a creature to its owner's hand. And pirate spell bomb acts as a shock spell. 
So this gives us decent card advantage. We get basically two options out of one spell bomb. Kind of works similar to the way a charm would, where you have options for what you want the spell to do. Even if you were running a monocolored deck, you only had white mana available, you still could use that colorless mana. Um, you know, tap your white and draw a card instead of gaining five life if you're at a position where you don't need that extra life. And actually, I will tell you now, a lot of times you will not because you do have a lot of options here for gaining additional life. So something to keep in mind um, th that will a lot of the times be used for the card draw more than anything else um, but these are really great they work as control options and what you want to do is obviously use these and use things like the squire um, and the gargoyle to recur them so you can get away with running only a single copy of these um, two copies of the pyrite because it's the more important one uh, and you can use it in addition to these and reuse the ability over and over say you use the spell bomb you pay the red to do two damage to either a creature or your opponent and then you can later cast the squire and return that spell bomb from your graveyard to your battlefield um, after you pay it obviously it does return with the squire directly to your hand then you pay the one replay the spell bomb and use its ability once again basically you're taking these uh, four spell bombs and you're creating extra copies through the use of these recursion spells in addition to that we also get some extra fun stuff here bone splitter gives you a little bit of an aggressive advantage it's going to be helpful you do have a a lot of evasion here with some flyers and whatnot, but the extra uh, plus two power is nothing to um, bark at. You can sit back and do a lot of damage on that. You also get a copy of the Verdian Longbow. That can actually prove quite helpful. Um, it's something that allows you to get through a lot of the fairies and the one toughness creatures that are out there, as well as do a little bit of extra damage here and there. Um, other things that could be used, obviously, would be the Life Staff. I imagine at some point in time, if you were going to build a sideboard for this deck, that's something you would definitely consider putting in there. Even though this deck, like I said, has a decent amount of life gain to it, it's something that you could um, really get some use out of. So, looking at the remainder creature base, we do get a decent amount of draw here. It's running three copies of Ninja the Deep Hours, and that's a great opportunity to get a bit of extra card draw in there. It's going to be able to not only get that card draw, but you can consider the fact that because it returns a creature to your hand in a similar way to Momentary Blink, you're going to get to reuse these cards even more. So, you know, with the Gargoyles, you're already looking at basically six copies of the Squire. Um, you can consider the Ninjas, if they're used there, to be another three copies. And then Momentary Blink just makes things disgusting because, you know... So let's do some math here, right? Uh, four and two is six, and three is nine, and then you get these additional eight copies of Momentary Blink that you can use on these Squires and Gargoyles to return Spell Bombs. So you can see how this goes, especially as you get to the mid to late game and you've really built up your mana base. You can start blinking things, you can start reusing Spell Bombs and doing significant damage to an opponent. Um, so you do get a full set of Momentary Blinks, which may seem like overkill, but all of your creatures do have some come into the battlefield effect. Obviously Steam Core Wield is not going to be as good, um, but you can blink all of these abilities. Moldrifters can be blinked um, off of the Evoke to get extra draw. Uh, you can blink the Rift Watchers for extra life gain, and obviously the Trinket Mage to find the remaining artifacts that you need. So it's really a great opportunity here, and like I said, in the late game it gets really fun. You get a lot of mana built up, and you can sit there and reuse spell bombs on your turn. Um, as far as control goes, it's going to be bringing in three copies of Steam Core Weird, and this is pretty good. Um, it is, of course, a little bit heavy on the cost, uh, but it does do a shock, basically, to target creature or player. Um, that can be beneficial. It also going to be using, if you, you notice here, these are all snow-covered lands. Um, I did switch out the versions I don't own, so you can see these lands here, but um, it is going to run a full base of snow-covered lands so that we can run a full copy of Scred. Um, a lot of times what you want to do, you know, you're kind of keeping the mana cost low in this deck, and so, you know, a lot of times you'll go to the more direct things like Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning for that kind of thing. Um, Scred works better than those in this instance because, first off, it is instant speed, which gets you around the Chain Lightning. Um, and then the other part of it is the fact that it has the ability to go above and beyond three damage. The Lightning Bolt is obviously limited to only three damage, where Scred can do as much damage as snow-covered permanents that you control. Um, so it works really great here for that one cost, gives you a lot of great opportunity to finish off a specific creature, and is really helpful to get around that hard level of four toughness that Popper occasionally runs into. Uh, final creature here is obviously the Rift Watchers, like I said, gives you a little life gain so you can get yourself into the mid to late game. A lot like the Is It Post deck, um, or any eight post for that matter, where they use the Glimmer posts to gain some extra life and get themselves to that mid to late game where they really want to be. Um, and get things going. I mean, as you approach that mid to late game, you're obviously going to start thinking about using spell bombs, not just to clear creatures off the board, but you're going to want to use those to do damage to your opponent as well, so they can really be um, 
helpful there as far as getting past some stalemate. You can of course find yourself in that that creature wall. Uh, you have a whole bunch of creatures, and your opponent has a whole bunch of creatures, and no one's really attacking because you don't know how to get through just yet. But the recursion here on the spell bomb and whatnot gives you a lot of great opportunities. Um, same with the longbow gives you a lot of opportunities to basically burn your opponent off of the artifacts. Um, mana base is a little bit heavier on the blue, obviously, because we're running, you know, you want to find the trinket mages, you want to be able to draw the cards you need. Um, after that, it's kind of balanced out. It is bringing in a single copy of Ancient Den, Great Furnace. I'm not really sure, um, like I said the, in the article there, these are not going to be altered lists. These are going to be exactly as I found them, and we're going to see how they go these days. Um, not really sure why this list opts to not bring in a single copy, at least, of Seed of the Synod. Um, to fetch the blue mana off of Trinket Mage, and just opts to get red and white off of that. I guess because it is so much heavier in blue, it does give you an opportunity to get uh, a start that is all blue mana, um, get the Trinket Mage, and find the other colors you need. Um, that's just my guess, you know, that you will be more likely to have blue than the others. But it's a lot of fun. Um, we're going to take a look at some decks, um, I'm sorry, some games here, and just see how the interactions go. Uh, and just try and have a, a bit of a good time with this. So I hope you enjoy it, and definitely try... Uh, uh, sleeving it up and giving it a try if you have it.